let's build some damage indicator pop up again on the screen showing which way the enemy is I'm gonna have to build a little character controller and some art I'll get right to that All right, so there is a very simple uh, controller, which I totally forgot to add the character controller component to it, which was dumb of me. So let's just add that real quick. There we go, done and done. So we have, like I said, we have this little character controller. There's nothing to it. I mean, other than I can move around and have mouse look. That's pretty much about it. We have an enemy with no logic on it, and we need to fix that up so what do we need well the first thing we need is we're gonna have a health and it's gonna be called health and we need to take in damage so we're just gonna make a little FSM like this gets damage get event properties We want one property, we're going to call it the attacker, type game object, stored as the attacker. Okay, perfect. Now we want to set event properties. We're more or less just passing the buck with this one. And we're, I might as well call it attacker as well. Why not? Type game object. And it's going to tag, and then we're going to send event. Literally just passing the information along. Just in case you have, like, numerous <coughs> uh, enemies attacking and player. Whatever the case may be, it's, it's, it's easier to pass the buck than it is to try to figure it out some other crazy way. So, uh, we need a canvas, and this canvas obviously needs an FSM. Uh, something to do with creating the indicator so let's let's give a um, ah, we'll call it blood sounds good get event properties uh, it can also use attacker as the key it is type game object and attacker all right so our player he gets damaged by an attacker. We're going to send. We're just passing the information off to our canvas, uh, and that's it. The canvas, however, it needs actually it needs two FSMs. Let's call this one pool. And I built an action for this because if I don't. No, like, relatively complex, but there's a lot of actions that are needed because of the math, and it's it's like after 15 actions, what a pain in the arse. So, I built one action just to help really make that simple. So, for example, uh, we need to we're going to spawn a thing called we'll call it blood. We don't have it yet. And spawn point doesn't matter, position doesn't matter, rotation doesn't matter, but we do need to store the 
created blood. And we need to set parent to make sure our little UI image here. Oh, I've already got a set parent in here. <laughs> Look at me, I'm all sharp as a tack all of a sudden, apparently. Or am I? So the parent is going to be the canvas, and we can I'll reset its position. Local position, sure. So the indicator I got is, I called it indicator. So it, it's, it doesn't really add a whole anything new. There isn't actions for, it just, I mean, other than using 12 actions and just confusing the hell out of everybody, uh, it's just, condenses that down so we have our attacker which is what's being passed to us we have a player which <coughs> being first person don't use the capsule because the capsules forward doesn't change in fact I can prove that to you right now if we look at the capsule and the camera they're both looking in the same direction right if I hit play doesn't matter where we look with the camera or how we're moving Right? I mean, it, it feels normal when you're playing it, but see how the capsule's rotation isn't isn't changing. But if I click on the camera, the camera's rotation's changing. Right? <clears throat> so, because of that, because of that one little thing right there, don't use uh, the capsule. Use the camera. Right? And you can bring that in as a variable. So we also need a indicator. So we have to create one. So create a blood offset. I, I added an offset because, uh, unlike, you know, a normal human being, uh, I built my, uh, my image, right? If I stick my image in here, go 2d. I built it this way, right? And really, you're dealing with this you want it that way so I don't have that so I have a I guess I can I'll just make a new one so let's create a image and you want to use an image for this not a sprite an image image and I can give this you know like size 400 ish we can call this blood blood of my blood uh, all right so we have that it obviously needs an FSM and because we don't like doing anything normal we are going to uh, color interplate And nah, no, you know what? Color interplate's a little too linear. Let's sample curve. Let's sample curve this. Yes, 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 yes. Right? And we don't want ones because we don't want to start at ones. You're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing. Uh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's you'll you'll see you'll see. Just follow along. Um, <clears throat> is we are going to start making a new state actually uh, we're going to set float value because we want to make sure this is zeroed time is zero and we come along over here and now we're going to float add uh, time one every frame per second so essentially it's just time dot delta time and we're going to sample along this. So we're more or less going to be sampling this whole thing. Now, while we do that, set graphic color. Move this to the bottom. We don't want to use the color. We All we want to do is do the alpha. That's why I stored the alpha. We want to do this every frame. So this is how the alpha is going to be over that period of time. So let's early in the thing go pretty high. If you close it and reopen it, it kind of rescales things down for you. 
and let's go like this let's come along somewhere and just maintain this height and then and then it can curve down something like that so it comes up quick holds and gradually drops something along those lines all right that's it <clears throat> so now we all we want is a float compare because we need this to actually end so time to one if it's greater end it move that to the bottom and if we end it let's just pooler destroy self now we have a pooling system so now we can I'll just drag that where are we I'll put it anywhere put it anywhere then I'll lose it right there crowd run let's stick it there I don't know why we're sticking there but we're gonna stick it there anyways so we need a pool so we're creating a pool called pooler pool we're using that we called it blood that's literally all it needs so now we call blood we create this puppy we set its parent to the canvas because we need to do that or you can't see it and then we use our special little action here to rotate it now like i said now mine's facing to the right i should have built it so it's you know pointing up so i'm going to give it an offset of 90. and that's it so when we take damage we get who the attacker is and there's a couple different ways you can do that and we just send it off so the enemy and we're not going to do anything too crazy and special with this all we're going to do is let's just do a oh, let's do a random weight so it's not too machine like you know like 0.5 to 1 not real time don't care about that uh, go finish come over here and set or send event we also have to set event properties which also reminds me at the very start of this we have to get ourselves it's not just the way things work get owner so we are ourself that's fine so we are going to set an event property called attacker it is type game object it is us we are going to send this uh, i'm just going to drag him over normally you'd use a variable for that uh, but that's i'm not really too worried about the communication end of things for now and finish and go back over here so he'll just keep going forever just attacking us so I should have went full screen for this now we have blood all right let's go full screen let's see this in full screen so now we have yeah. we're getting hit if I turn around and see we're being attacked from behind I don't want to walk off the edge that would be stupid but yeah so there we have an indicator hey it's got the nice little fade right it kind of glows and fades of which direction we're being attacked in said pretty simple like i said i mean really most of that i mean the enemy that part doesn't matter i mean you can build that any which way you want uh the character the player he is just not doing anything there that's just moving uh he's just passing the information along he's not even really doing anything with it normally you would have damage in there and take away health and so forth too so really when it comes down to it uh we create our particle or whatever you're using or our our image it, it, this this contains an image because i use a rec transform to rotate it uh so we we have who we're attacking so we make sure we you know create our image make it a child of your canvas or else it ain't going to show up um you know make sure it's, it's it's position is zero it's in the middle uh and then we we say okay this is our attacker this is our player and this is our created image that we made and uh, you know i threw in an offset because i screwed up my art but 
It really is just those those three variables, and it, that's it. That's all. That's all it is. So, and and you you technically don't need the custom action I just made for this, but <clears throat> that will save you like 20, 30 actions and a bunch of chaos and fifty freaking variables. And so, <clears throat> anyways, there you have it.